Hello there. Welcome back to our Hamilton Ferrari adventure. We are, well, pretty far into the season. Round 15 is about to start in four days. And we are just barely hanging on ahead of Perez and Verstappen. Last time around, they, uh, well, gave us a bit of a beating. And today, we'll see if we can somewhat recover. So currently, it is looking a little bit promising. These numbers shouldn't be taken at face value because, well, we just came out of the Netherlands. Probably damaged the car. We'll have a look at that as, uh, well, we go into Monza here. So we have a very, very tiny buffer at the moment, which means that the end of this season could be fairly interesting. But even with that, I think we will be all right. So race prep for the Italian GP. We have uh, our car report here. 918. So the high speed cornering ability and the top speed of our car is terrible, unfortunately. So we are suffering a little bit, but we'll do our best here to try and make something happen as uh, Leclerc is a little bit better at controlling his car. Now we are going to still say that we're probably going to get one car top four. I guess that is fine. Q2 for both cars, qualifying position, both cars in Q3. It's going to be a little bit. Well, not really conservative, it's what I always do. But, as mentioned, the car is a bit of a, a bit of in a troublesome situation here. Because as you can see, we lack a lot of the high-speed cornering ability. We lack top speed, both which are going to be key around this track. And as such, with Rebel having, as you can see, an actual huge advantage here, they are beating us in everything. They are the best team when it comes to cornering. We're going to have a bit of a uh, bit of a rough time ahead. We just have to pray that they decide to make some pieces that aren't necessarily beneficial to their car. Now we have a design slot open here for the rear wing, which I am pretty sure that I decided to keep open to have a look at what we could expect from ATR. So we're going to do just that. We're going to allow it, the ATR process to go through after this race weekend. But yeah, we have some new pieces here coming in, in basically over the next three weeks. That should hopefully make us a little bit more competitive compared to uh, compared to the Red Bull. That's going to be my hope. But at the same time, we are going to go ahead here and start manufacturing some extra parts just in case we have a little bit of damage. Having a couple of extra pieces isn't really that much of a cost, that much of a problem. And I do fear that we are going to have incidents that aren't going to be, you know, completely good for our our team here. We're also going to go ahead and install the upgrades that we have on both cars. As you can see, they were lacking the chassis on car one. It's going to lose a little bit of cornering, but the top speed gain in particular is going to be probably quite vital around this place. Front wings are looking good. Rear wing here, we're going to go ahead and upgrade that as well, giving us a little bit more of a boost. We did compare car one, so we can have a look at now. Once uh, both cars actually do have their upgrades, what it's actually looking like. And I think what we're going to do here is actually give this new side pod to Hamilton. It's a little bit of a, not necessarily a good thing, because he still needs to learn about the, uh, the side pod. But I think it'll make it at least a little bit easier. Now, if we take a look at the car analysis right now, compared to, say, the Red Bull, we're still lacking, but we are closer in top speed. We are a little bit further behind in medium, high speed, a little bit closer. But even then, we are... I'd say a decent chunk behind here. It's going to be uh, actually going to be a little bit more interesting to see how this turns out. But we're close now in top speed with them. We can almost rival them. So hopefully, as I said, over the next few weeks, we're going to get upgrades. And hopefully, these upgrades can prove to be key. Now, I did say we're going to get upgrades over the next three weeks. But generally, here, as you can see, next three races here until Suzuka are all going to be fairly painful. In Qatar... And in uh, Coda, Mexico, Brazil, Las Vegas, and Abu Dhabi is basically when we're going to have to make our comeback. So today, it's probably just going to be about surviving in the, uh, well, surviving in the current setting versus the Red Bulls. And I'll have a look at the pick again after Italy here, because I don't know exactly how tired we'll be, so we'll go back and deal with that later. But yeah, as I mentioned, the goal today, very simple, try and retain our ranking versus red bull see if we can hold out against them paris is currently the more dangerous one but i have no doubt that verstappen is going to be the scarier one by the end of this so 
we have three races now where I do believe that we're going to struggle to beat the Red Bulls just because of the car difference. Drivers are nearly equal. Kind of, let's be honest. Fairly equal. And as such, the car itself is going to be the defining factor. And specifically around here, we're going to suffer due to high cornering or lack of high cornering. So let's head to the Challenge GP. Let's see if we can, uh, at the very least, snatch a podium. So interestingly enough, here, we might actually be up with a chance as we have Leclerc second, Hamilton fourth. But both Sonoda and Perez are taking penalties here. So this could work out to our advantage. We also have De Vries uh, in fifth. Kind of gives you an idea of just how massively we boosted the Alpha Tower uh, of all cars compared to the rest here. But yeah, both Alonso and Sainz had a bit of a... Uh, Bit of a rough time in Q1, and you can kind of see the same here being the case for Norris, as Piastri did beat him. So, yeah, we'll have to try and deal with that. But the goal is going to be fairly simple. We are starting 1-2, I would assume. And we'll try and make the best out of that situation. Now, for the race here, the best thing we could do is probably a one-stop strategy like this one. Because uh, the fact that we boosted all the cars do tend does mean that for the most part everyone is running somewhat together and that does lead to things being problematic if you go for any strategy that involves pitting well early so basically i've made my own kryptonite that's the situation that we do find ourselves in now the other thing that we could do if we want to try and be super cheeky is of course do something like this but even that is going to be slower than the uh, hard strategy, hard strategy also leaves you with more tires. So honestly, this is the best strategy that we have available to us. The only other thing we could do is try and run a little bit light so we have tire to fight with if you need to. But honestly, just doing this should work just fine. We'll go attack for the first uh, half a lap or so. so. We can stay ahead of the others. But yeah, we could try and do something with a cheeky, really cheeky two-stopper. But even that is going to be, I think... Uh, not really that viable because well as i said we're gonna be pitting into traffic and everyone is kind of the same in terms of pace and you can see even this one is going to be slower than just a straight up one stopper here now usually we can kind of take advantage of this even so because we get a bit of a gap by attacking but in this day we can't actually do that so we're gonna go with a very straightforward and boring one stopper because it is actually i believe the best uh the best strategy that we have available to us it is also the fastest now we could again use two stoppers when we have uh, you know push capabilities where we can actually get away from the rest of the cars we, we can't it's at the moment there is some soft runners here which is going to make things interesting they'll probably stop twice but even then as i said we we just, just do not have the capabilities to pull something like that off so we're going to be playing it safe and debris here has actually kind of jumped Hamilton, and it's going to be a little bit of a uh, little bit of a bother. Verstappen in fifth, Paris down in eighth. So uh, hopefully Albon, De Vries can play the role of uh, super defense for us. That would be uh, that would actually be much appreciated if they do pull that off. But as I mentioned here, we will be tuning down the tires fairly early. We want to try and take advantage of kind of keeping the tires where they are. And if need be, just run with the rest of the pack uh, with the RS. With that said, we're just going to speed along here until we get to that first uh, pit stop. So Paris is definitely the scarier of the two Red Bulls. Uh, as you can kind of see, uh, he is going to perform. Basically, it's going to amount to a double overtake here. So definitely quick, definitely spooky. And, uh, well, he's going to be a bit of a problem there. As he's now running in first, he's already carried a bit of a gap. Verstappen is not having good time here. He has been more stuck in the RS train than Paris, who is pushing his tires uh, a bit more aggressively than Verstappen is as well. So what I'm thinking here that we do is going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to run attack now until these tires die. We might end up pitting a little bit earlier by doing so. But because everyone has already kind of done, is already kind of doing the same, the soft runners are going to be pitting fairly soon. As you can see, they're going onto the hard tire. If Paris pits before us, I think we're going to have a really, really hard time doing really anything with him. 
We need to create a little bit of a gap to the cast behind here. Albon, Verstappen, the Reed, Sonoda. We see Russell going into the pits now. So we're actually kind of forced here to make a bit of a change in order to make sure that we can uh, pit without getting overtaken. Now, having car advantage is one thing, but uh, in our case, we do struggle with just overtaking normally. So I want to kind of have that little bit of extra security just to be on the safe side that we can actually get things done if we if we need to here. So that is the idea. Let's push it. Let's see where we uh, where we end up after the pit stops. The first Red Bull has opted to pit here with uh, Paris now going into the pit lane. And as you can see, he comes out in free air ahead of Albon by a couple of seconds. So what I think we have to do here is just pit, I think Leclerc first. We're going to push everything we have. And we're going to do the same here for Hamilton. We're just going to allow him to, to kind of push everything that we have in order to try and get out ahead of uh, Verstappen and Paris here. And as you can see, Leclerc like, does get jump in the pits due to a slow stop. And it's also going to come out behind uh, Paris to begin with. So both Red Bulls jump us in the pits. That's not really what we uh, what we wanted to see. And it is a bit of a problem. Now, we'll have to see what Hamilton, where Hamilton ends up coming out because already uh, Leclerc is a little bit behind. Hamilton with a bit of a slow stop there, three seconds. I don't think he's going to beat the Red Bulls out here. Oh, he actually does. Just about. He's going to slide in between. But even then, we have used a lot of energy. We have used a lot of extra fuel to make this happen. So we'll have to see if we can actually stay with the Red Bulls or not uh, as Leclerc gets overtaken. But at this point, we'll just be working on trying to keep our tires alive, try and stay with Paris, try and stay with Verstappen, and hopefully jump them towards the end of this race. We're getting very close to the end here. Hamilton is just outside DRS range, unfortunately. Three laps to go, two once we cross the line. Leclerc has not been able to fully keep up, unfortunately, so we're just having him push right now in the hopes that he might be able to make something happen a little bit further down the line. We are going to have to spend some energy here just to make sure that we stay within DRS because if we aren't going to get any chance of attacking the Red Bulls, it is going to be with the assistance of DRS on the main straight on this final lap. And even then, I don't have high hopes for us. So for Hamilton, we're going to give him the high overtake aggression order. And uh, as you can see, energy is low, which means that we have limited... Uh, Limited chances here, but we are going to go ahead and deploy it. We are going to try and make something happen. Uh, anything really at this point. But with the Rebels running side by side, they're kind of blocking any chance at uh, getting an overtake done, unfortunately, for Hamilton here. But I'd say we still did a decent race. Uh, probably should have had gone attack a little bit early on the medium, so we could have pitted. A little bit ahead of the Red Bulls. We have a lot of time remaining. Could probably start attacking a little bit earlier as well. And uh, that is what it is. But uh, it's still a good good try here by Hamilton. I'll be honest. It, we did have a shot at it. We weren't successful. And that is just how it goes sometimes. Unfortunately, first and second for the Red Bull. We take third. But the silver lining here is that Verstappen did beat Paris. So we'll take at least that with us. Unfortunately, not good uh, showing here for science, but uh, that's probably also due to me kind of destroying the balance a little bit. Norris did end up beating Piastri in this one, though, but yeah. Uh, not really. Basically, here we ended up getting beaten on the pit stops, and that kind of put us on the back seat. If we were still running 1-2 ahead of Red Bulls, I think we could have kept them at bay. But you did kind of see that Paris very early just sliding past us, no problem. So, particularly on this track, we were suffering. At least we did snatch the extra point for fastest lap. So, it's not all terrible. We were kind of expecting this result. So, we'll just have to live with it. To uh, For Hamilton versus Paris, Paris just gained two points. That not, that's nothing massive. Verstappen does overtake Leclerc, though. And in the Constructors, we are slowly getting uh, caught up here. Probably by next race, unless we have some unforeseen uh, incidents. But... At the same time, it's not too shabby. It is uh, acceptable. We are doing uh, we're doing well with what we have, I dare say. And even then, we were still close to maybe snatching the win from the Red Bulls. Just uh, ended up having to use a little bit too much energy, a little bit too much uh, effort to catch up there towards the end. 
We're going to deny the board's uh, attendance. We don't uh, really care about that. Car part inspection result. A front wing has failed. We can go ahead and just replace that immediately. Not really a big problem. We want to manufacture an extra one just to be on top of everything. Cost cap remaining. We still have a decent chunk of money left, so I'm not too worried on that part of that uh, on that front either. But what I did want to have a look at here is the rear wing, and if we want to invest into getting a little bit more top speed, basically, because that is what this investment would be. It would be an investment in getting top speed. Uh, rather than anything else. As you can see, this is going to get us a little bit top speed, gets a little bit of DRS effectiveness. Going to lose a lot of high speed cornering though, so we probably end up doing something like this instead. And the numbers that I see here, even if we do use CFD, probably aren't going to look very amazing once we are through with, uh, with the CFD itself. So what I'm thinking we might do instead is if we go into our... I want to have a look at the underfloor compared to everything else. Um, let's see if we can find that car analysis, underfloor. Okay, so 78% drag reduction, 76%, 75%, 78-ish percent. Basically, these numbers you need to kind of translate into a percentage to get your expertise. That is why I'm mumbling percentage right now. But basically, I still think we're going to get more out of CFDing the underfloor again. Than we are going to get at anything else. And the underfloor is still quite a few days away. So we're going to go ahead and speed that up. But yeah, these are the basic gains from the underfloor. If we see if did, I think it would it is going to benefit us um, probably more than if we see if did the rear wing. It might even be that we'll be seeing more gains if we see if did something like the side pods there. Because the drag reduction, the airflow is fairly low. Let's, let's face it here. This is not high airflow. This is not high drag. Top speed. Uh, high speed cornering, which is where we're most lacking at the moment. We could get it from here. The question then just becomes, do we actually invest into the underfloor? Do we, uh, sorry, the rear wing? Or do we start saving a little bit of money at this point? And that's kind of where, you know, my questions are going to be, going to be put. And I think for this, for the time being, we're not going to invest anything more into the rear wing this season. We are going to have to try and be a little bit more strategic now in our money usage. Because we are going to have to buy a couple of ERSs. We haven't done that yet. That's 5 million down the drain. We might have to buy a couple of extra engines. So potentially here, we could end up with just having 15 million left at this point. So I think we're going to get the next set of parts. We're going to have a look at what we can use. We're most likely going to see if the either the underfloor, we'll have a look at the, how the numbers look compared to each other. And if we don't see if the underfloor, we'll do the side pods most likely. Having a look at everything else here, the suspension could be a potential target here. The cornering ability is uh, just about 50% for the medium speed. And about 78% for the low speed, 53% for the high speed. So we might be able to find some cornering here. But again, all, the, all three of these projects kind of finish around the same day. So we can take a look at it then. The chassis 74, 72, it is already high enough. So... Basically, chassis is out of the out of the door, anyways. Because if we were going to invest in side pod chassis, it's going to be the side pods. So yeah, I think we have a have an idea of what we want to do. But as I said, we're going to start kind of being a little bit more not really strategic, a little bit more careful with our choices and where we invest our invest our money going forwards. Because as I said, it's very likely that we will need to be competitive at the last couple of races, an extra engine for both cars. It's just uh, it's just a reality of the situation. For now, though, we're going to be fine with just three chassis side pods and underfloors. Well, we now have four underfloors, so less of a big deal. But you get the idea. Also, chassis now four. Financial changes, less cost cap. We will vote for that. I do like that regulation. It's always fun to have less money to use. Makes things more interesting. And this chassis is a bit of a small upgrade that we could probably... End up using. I uh, probably will end up using it, but as I said, this upgrade is very minor at the moment. And as you can see, we are still lacking a lot here, but just a 0 0.06 is going to give us four more places in terms of top speed. But yeah, we need, we need some of the bigger upgrades to come through for us. 
With that said, we don't have any manufactured projects going right now. I do want to just take a quick look at what we can get with the chassis if we were to invest in it. Uh, but yeah, I do think that we, we're kind of reaching the peak here. And even if I were to invest CFP time, the side pods are going to be a better option. It's just that simple. The question that remains now is do I want to make another chassis for the last basically four races of the year? Because that is what we do end up doing. And honestly, I think we will. It's very minor in terms of the games, but I think it is worth it, basically. It's one of the only real sources of high speed cornering. Uh, the engine cooling is going to be neat, but at the same time, we're so far into the season, it doesn't really matter much. So, yeah, I honestly don't know. It's a bit of a tough choice because we, aren't, we are in financial concern at the moment. Because again, if we have 50 million left, I'm going to be spending 3 million of that on the underfloor uh, design because we're going to basically be rushing two of them. So 3 million is the minimum, probably going to be closer to 4 million, let's be perfectly honest. So with that, with the little gain that that chassis represents, I can't in good faith actually go ahead and invest into it. We're going to have to also build the chassis. So I'm going to go ahead here and just make a final decision that we are going to go with these as our final chassis. It's going to cost us a bit of money. We're probably going to end up breaching the cost cap towards the end of the season. That's going to be fine. And we'll have a look after this race weekend. What we invest in. Underfloor, side pods, or suspension. Because actually, we're actually going to have to take some tough choices in this save. Which is actually kind of good here. Because I can't just power through with, uh, with a overpowered uh, kind of overpowered sliders. Let's be honest. I can't just power through with that. I'm going to actually have to think and make decisions based on actual minute gains to try and keep up with red bulls so i do i do enjoy this series just for that but yeah let us jump into the singapore gp i think we'll do hopefully a little bit better than last time around can't promise anything i think quality is going to be key here so let's see how that goes now this race is promising to be a bit of an interesting one because we have a lot of rain coming and if you take a quick look at this we should have an inter period wet period enters and then maybe even drives towards the end so we're gonna have to come up with a strategy that will allow us to create a bit of a gap before we pit but at the same time this worries me because usually this means that it might be lap 15 it might be lap 20 before we pit to enters so we'll have to see what exactly the tires are kind of capable of giving us here and i think hard tires probably could be the thing here uh medium tires will take lap 15 softs to lap 13. What if we do standard? We'd get to lap 25. The question is just what is quicker? <laughs> That's kind of hard to judge. So I think we're going to do a bit of a gamble here. We are starting 1 2. Hard tires will allow us to go full attack for the entirety of the, the stint. I do love going full attack. And then we'll just adjust to what we we see the others doing and this is a tip that i don't really take too much myself but i'm kind of playing a bit slower <laughs> a bit more tired today probably also you can hear in my voice all of these for lack of enthusiasm uh but it's not because i'm not enjoying myself it's actually because i'm just tired but yeah if we take a look at this again lap 11 to lap 20 it looks like just a very slow build up of uh, rain probably inters around 15 but it might even be 20. And as I, as I said, we're starting 1-2. I'd love to create a gap to the cast behind if we could. The question is just, is it better to run a soft tire on light versus a hard tire? And we can probably check that, to be fair. Check the reports here. The uh, compound performance. About 4 tenths advantage for a soft tire. This is within 10 laps. The hard tire here. It's actually incredibly slow compared to the soft tire. Now, if we say 20 laps is what we are kind of aiming for, I think we do soft. I think we go for soft and we run it on light. That'll just about bring us to lap 25. We'll be able to run attack. And since we're running it, light degradation won't be as high. We'll still retain a bit of an advantage. If others burn their tires, good on them. Soft tire would be probably the best option here. 
because again, we can adjust then to the level of rain. Because again, I'm very uncertain how much rain we're actually going to end up getting. And that is my main concern. We run full attack with the first couple of corners to get ahead of the rest. Then we can tune it down to light. Yes. I'm done discussing with myself. That sounds like a reasonable idea. Let's see if we can actually make it work. Final checks. We're just moments away from the Singapore Grand Prix. So soft tires, medium tires. Uh, kind of hints that everyone that we might not be on the might, the rain might come earlier rather than later. So that's a little bit interesting. It's also a bit worrying. You know, a single hard tire inside, so probably a good thing that we did avoid them. But yeah, it is a it's a bit concerning that uh, everyone else is running the same tires as I'm still gonna tune it down to light though. Uh, because even if we, you know, take care of the tires, as long as we take care of the tires, it's gonna translate into a lap time advantage towards the end. And with both Paris and Verstappen running side by side, one of them with soft tires behind us, an overtake is most likely gonna be inevitable here. I think they are gonna end up overtaking us at one point. The question is just when, so... Look like we're getting overtaken immediately. Which, again, isn't that surprising, it's a better car. But yeah, we're going to run light here. We're going to kind of uh, prioritize our tires as Verstappen is just going full aggression here. And hopefully that will translate to better lap times towards the end. But as I said, they're running soft tires. They're running hard, uh, running medium tires. It does kind of hint towards the rain coming earlier. So we might need to pit earlier than anticipated. But so far, again, I'm still happy with this. Let's see what we can do. We have a virtual safety car. It's not Verstappen. It's not Perez. It's not Sainz. It is Piastri. So that's going to slow things down a little bit. Lock up into the wall. Tad unfortunate, let's be fair. But currently we're about four seconds behind Verstappen. Depending on when the safety car restarts, we could benefit. Magnus is actually going into the pits here. As you can see, we've taken good care of our tires. We have a 10% advantage over Verstappen. He does have the time advantage, though. But yeah, most of the soft runners here are pushing the tires quite aggressively. Even the same can be said for the medium runners. So I do think we'll benefit here. The question is just, again, when does the rain arrive? Virtual safety car generally makes the rain arrive earlier because you're running slower. And uh, that does seem to be not really the case here. The rain has actually moved further away. So, probably a good idea to take care of our tires here. As worst case scenario, we'll be running these uh, soft tires uh, for a very long time. BSC ended in the middle of the corner for us, but the same can be said for Verstappen. So, we gained, we gained a little bit, but not too, too much there. But yeah, I think we might end up pitting maybe 18, 19. So, we'll try and, uh, try and push a little bit before that. I'm still a little bit uncertain exactly when we're going to pit, though, and that is the issue. Uh, but we'll see when the rain starts actually arriving now in two minutes. Just how quickly it starts going up. As Leclerc has found the wall, apparently. What exactly happened here? It said crash between multiple cars. Paris takes out Leclerc. And keeps on running. That is, uh... Sorry, guys. That's frustrating. And he's just straight up out. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Paris, what kind of damage does he suffer? Uh, it's damage from when he might pit. BSC. We got a VSC. Yep. What's up, Randy? Uh... It's not really a lot of rain, it barely goes up here, but yeah, that is a frustration in a box. Paris got a penalty, but he has opted to not uh, pit and switch that from wing. But yeah, this could... Uh, funnily enough, this, could, this, this might actually end up deciding the championship. Because Paris is probably still going to get on the podium. The question is just how far up he's going to get. Is he going to get third, second? Is he even going to win? And uh, if he does win, we're so going to be in trouble. But he is currently driving around with a, I would assume, major damage front wing. And as I said, I do 
assume we're going to be pitting before too long here. So we're just going to start burning these tires now. Try and hunt down Verstappen. Create a gap to Paris, who's definitely slow. He got overtaken by Science immediately. Uh, so that's going to be kind of the hope here. We'll see, though. Might be that we've started attacking too soon. Potentially. But I think, I think we're kind of... I'm going to gamble on this being somewhat correct. And if need be, we'll just have to run the soft sun. A little bit of a slower mode towards the end. Maybe take a little bit better care of uh, care of them. But yeah, we'll push. We'll see when we get to actual pitting, pitting rain levels. Because it's slowly going up here. So potentially in 4 minutes, potentially in 8 minutes. One of those most likely. We now see the AI starting to pit around 0.8 millimeters. And honestly, we're just going to do the same thing. If we take a look at the rain, it is going to go a little bit lower again. But even then, I don't think it's worth it to stay out. We could try and gamble here on kind of jumping Verstappen by pushing everything we have for another lap or two. Uh, as the soft still won't be terribly slow or anything like that. So we could gamble on staying out for one more lap, see if we could. Well, Verstappen does it's the same. As Paris now pits, he's probably going to hopefully get that front wing fix. We'll take a look. Maybe. He's serving his penalty. He's having a pit stop issue. What exactly Into happened? The comes Perez. And there, there we see the problem. That he served his penalty? <laughs> Did they just say that he had a pit stop issue by serving his penalty? Because that's kind of what it looks like. We're over 90, uh, 90 millimeters now. So yeah, we're going to get in. Get on the inters. Uh... The question now is, it's going to be straightforward. Are we going to go on the wets or not? That's going to be kind of a big deal. Because if we do go on the wets, then we can run attack. If we do not go on the wets, then that would be a terrible idea. Uh, all the cars that are jumping us currently have yet to pit. So we are kind of safe in, in that regard. I'm going to slow time down here. Just so we can actually get him off a full attack here. We don't want to burn these tires. Let's make sure we keep these tires in good nick. Unnecessarily. So. Let's take a quick look here. It should go wet in a few laps time. And it should remain wet for the foreseeable future. So I think we are going to go full attack here. And try and make something happen. We're still getting drier lines though. So if we see the heat spike. Like it kind of is doing at the moment. We're going to tune it down to standard. And maybe light just to keep the tires alive. Because... This is actually a fairly short wet period. It's around 10 laps, which, you know, isn't really short. But, uh, we've been fooled already once by the weather. So let's try and be careful and kind of mirror what the AI does here. Uh, Magnuson is quicker than us because, again, it's very low in the millimeter scale, 0 0.75. But even then, he has to pit at one point. Everyone ahead of us is going to have to pit at one point, so... I still still feel fairly comfortable, as we have a yellow flag here. Verstappen has had an incident. Okay, maybe we can still salvage this. Had a bit of an incident there with Magnussen's um, overtake. Now, did Verstappen suffer tire damage? No, he banged the, he banged the left wheel, but suffered no damage to his tires. But. We are going to do everything we can right now to stay ahead. Uh, because that's kind of going to be key here. But we might want to be behind going into the DRS zone. I don't think we are. Oh, yeah, this is going to be a this is going to be a rough fight here. Because we need to stay ahead now for another minute. So I'm going to go full attack here. Just to be on the safe side. Uh, at least hoping... That will be able to stay ahead because if we stay ahead until it becomes full rain and no DRS, I do have faith that we'll be able to keep that going. So we'll micromanage this lap to try and make that happen for the most part. Let's get full attack again. We need to extend that gap a little bit, but at the same time, I don't want to destroy the tires if what I fear is going to come to pass, which is that we're not going into the wets at all. Magnuson is finally in the pits. The active Verstappen is increasing somewhat. Well, a little bit just because of uh, how things are. And we no longer have DRS. We kind of achieved what we set out to do here. 
Now, as I mentioned, Verstappen's tyres, he didn't suffer much damage during that uh, touch with the wall. But I could, ex I, we can expect him to have some suspension damage. That's kind of what I what I would believe. And the water is going up right now. Black Perry is still, well, eight laps now. I, we'll have to see if this actually does turn wet. That's that's my main concern. And we're going to stay on Inters till the end. So basically, we're not going to be pitting again if we if we don't go to the wets. So we need to just kind of play it safe here. I would love to create a gap to Verstappen, but at the same time, I'm not so sure we're going on the wets. There's been a few uh, races lately where we just has not have a, had any use for them. And I have a feeling this one is going to be kind of the same. So we'll try and take care of the tires. Try and keep Verstappen behind, but that's going to be a bit of a rough task, even if he has some damage. You can kind of see him running pretty much inside of us. And that is with us burning uh, burning fuel. So, yeah, it's going to be rough. He's also low confidence after the hit, so potentially could take us out. This is going to be a nerve-wracking uh, <laughs> nearly 40 laps around here, but we'll see how we do. Uh... Maybe we'll get full wets, maybe we'll not. We are currently getting closer to the full rain, 250 millimeters. So maybe, just maybe, we'll jump for on the west for a few laps. So the wet weather that I feared has not come to pass. If we take a look at here, it kind of dabbled, but it never went full wet. So the question now is going to be, is it going to be worth it to pit at the last lap here? That's going to be uh, that's going to be interesting. We could still have more incidents, but Hamilton has been able to create more of a gap towards Verstappen. We're going to be burning some more fuel, but we should be able to keep these inters alive till the end of the race if we need to. So currently, it's looking really, really good. Paris is still stuck down in 14th. So maybe, just maybe, we come out of this one with an advantage, even with the uh, torpedoing that Paris did. The question is just how damaged Verstappen's car is, and if his low confidence will result in in him having another incident before the end of this one. Quick, so we're about seven laps from the end here and the track is starting to dry, which is a bit of a concern. If we take a look here, it should still stay wet-ish until we get to the end. So no real change there. We are still running ahead of Verstappen with that little bit of a buffer as so we have started running more aggressive on the tires. Might as well do the same here for fuel. So I do think that we, barring any incidents, should be safe in first, hopefully. Now, Paris has managed to get his way back into the points, but I don't that, sincerely doubt that he's going to get Magnussen and Tsunoda before the end of this race. So he might score one point, Verstappen has fastest lap, so if he ends second, he's going to end up scoring 19. 20 points for them total, 25 for us, hopefully for Hamilton there. So it's looking really, really good at the moment. For now though, we'll just speed along till the end and uh, see if we win or if we end up having to take a pit stop to go for the dries in the last couple of laps. Okay, we have a bit of a difficult choice here because as you can see, it's still damp on track, but Verstappen has jumped in. Potentially, he might get us, I think. Seven seconds quicker in terms of lap time. So we're going to have to respond here by getting Hamilton in ASAP as soon as he's done with uh, this lap here because if we don't we might get jumped uh, we might have to take a look at it though because if the rest of the grid here does not pit we might also be throwing some you know the victory away Verstappen is 36 seconds behind I think we actually go ahead and we wait one more lap This is a difficult, difficult decision, though, because if this would actually show us the actual lap we're on, three laps ago, if it's just two laps and we do the pit here, even if we're seven seconds quicker, we might struggle to catch some of these guys because there's just two laps. 27 seconds in the pit lane. We're also burning the tires and we're going to keep on burning them more aggressively. Well, this is a bit of a rough one. Do we stay out for the last couple of laps here, or do we... Uh... I think we try and stay out. We're gonna... We're gonna pit on next lap. The, the dry line is there, but it's arriving very, very slowly. The Inters, though, are gonna get burnt up. That's the thing. 
That's the problem. We're still beating the Red Bulls. We're basically cover them, covering them off to be on the safe side. I think we have to. I think we have to pit on this lap. I still think that the rest of the... Like, if, if a few of the AI pit generally, they will all do that. We're seven seconds quicker. We might be able to get Russell. We should be able to get at least Alonso. And we should come out way ahead of Ocon. So we need to do four overtakes unless they too decide to pit. So we are going to go ahead and uh, answer with our own little pit stop here. Russell stays out. We have a pit stop error. Ugh, that's not what we needed right now with two laps to go. I'm probably being a little bit too concerned about the Red Bulls, honestly. But at the same time, I feel like uh, it is something we have to do. To be fair though, with how the game works, the cars that are slow will generally also step out of the way, like you saw Sainz do there. So it's not necessarily a super negative thing to do. And the question is just, can we get Russell? 10 seconds. <laughs> I think we're getting Russell, but we're getting Alonso at least, so... You can also see the Stappen is just shooting up. I think we would have been safe. I think we might have thrown it away, but you can also see, we might actually end up getting Russell here. 3.3 seconds. 3.1. A uh, fuel issue. <laughs> Deploy. Chase down the Russell to the finish line. So Russell, Russell does get us there, unfortunately. So, but you can see, you can see just how quick this happened was too. If we didn't have a pistol barrel, this would still have been a ch good choice. That's really frustrating. That was a great performance from the Ferrari driver. That is frustrating. If we didn't have that pistol barrel, we would have gotten Russell. But then again, he stayed out. I would have expected him to pit. Alonso up in fourth there. We still gain over the Red Bulls, but the problem is um, the damage to Leclerc's car. That's the thing. That's going to be the big one here. But we gain points on Perez, so we still have to basically race to save freedom on, over them. Uh, Constructors, though, is not that good. Just 20. Just 20 points. But yeah, this pit stop error ruined us. That's the best way I can describe it. And that is very unfortunate. Now, the underfloor design is complete. We're going to get the suspension. We're going to get the side pods. And then we can have a look at all three and decide if we're going to continue developing or we're going to use CFD on and make a choice from there. Now, if we take a look at the pick crew, I'm wondering just how tired they were. 43% there. Okay. Because we don't have really a good time with our pick crew for the most part. We're still going to be tired going into next week. I would assume they're still going to be tired around here. So we'll have a look up after Suzuka. I think that's just what we're going to have to do. But yeah, let us see where we're at. The gearbox, the ERS in poor condition. That's not really a big surprise for Leclerc here. He did get hit in the back. The ERS was virtually gone to begin with. But that kind of secures that. Leclerc is taking a penalty. We lost a chassis, a front wing, a rear wing, and a suspension. The engine took enough damage that we're going to have to buy him a new one. We're taking a full set of penalties for him next race, I'm pretty sure. Because one gearbox with the amount of races remaining is not good. The ERS needs a replacement anyways. And again, the engine, we're going to have to buy another one. So kind of good that we budgeted for that earlier. But before we get into any of that, let's have a look at the designs and what we want to develop. And... While the underfloor gains here aren't anything massive either, compared to the rear wing that we had, I still think that it's an overall better investment. That's the best way I can describe it. I still think it's going to be decent enough. But before we make any, you know, final decisions on that, let's have a look at the side pods. This is a fairly, this is a more massive gain, honestly. So what I am thinking here is that we might actually go ahead and invest the CFD time into the side pods. I think that's going to pay off far more than anything else we do. Suspension, well, we don't have a suspension on the car, which is why it's showing, honestly, we should just go ahead and replace the missing car parts so we get the accurate data. Front wing could be a thing there. We haven't really invested in that, to be fair. But yeah. Um, side pods seem to be the best option right now. All the underflow would give is kind of a decent gain overall. The side pods that we are seeing here, 
Uh, if we take a look at that with just CFD numbers right now. I would think they're going to be the best investment. But it still does remain to be seen. So what we could do here is do this with the side pods, which would give us already a decent base to work out from. If that makes sense. And can't really compare right now. Half a KPH. That should take us past Red Bull. Bit more of the cornering. Now we severely lack. Losing engine cooling is going to suck. But there's so few races left this season. We have kind of said that we're going to need an ERS and engines for both cars. I think it's an investment that's going to be worth it. So we're going to rush this with as many engineers as possible. It'll be done in 16 days. Then we're going to need another 16 days. So we're going to have it for the last four races, basically. Let's go ahead and get this uh, project started. Now, for the other investments that we would like to make, let's just take a look at what we are actually, well, have available to us. Now, making a couple of new suspensions here is a pretty much just something we're going to have to anyways. So let's invest in three of them for now. The underfloor, while a small upgrade, is not something that we massively need to focus on. We're going to make better side pods, but... Since we kind of have side pods all over the place, there's not a, not really anything negative with making these. We'll basically just be using them for the sale. That is still fine. We could rush one if we want to be really, really gambly. Rush one for the next race in Suzuka. Uh, it's not it's not a huge cost, so we'll do just that. Now, rear wings. We are going to have to make a couple more of them because we are basically running out. And that is all of our manufacturing slots. But as mentioned, I'm a little bit unsure how I want to play things with more developments here. The chassis, underfloor, suspension maybe could be worth it. But at the same time, we are getting one more into that period where we have to sacrifice. Sacrifice to gain, as it were. And in this case, we'd be sacrificing brake cooling, but it might actually be worth it. Problem here again is just the cost cap because we're buying two engines, we're buying two ERS, and that's 50 million. We need money to play with, so I think we're not going to do any more projects. We need money to buy components. We still have a lot of racing left, let's face it. Suzuka here, round 17. And if we take a look at it from the circus perspective here, there's still seven races, including, well, three sprints. So we are going to need money to be flexible with our cars but yeah that is my reasoning hopefully it is acceptable i would think and we did actually get the financial change going through here so if we were to play more seasons we're gonna have even less money next time around but yeah we're gonna be a little bit cowardly a little bit careful and just not invest in any more parts while well, it would be good to do so uh from a you know conquer competitive standpoint we need money to buy components it's just that simple and we're having another full rain weekend at Suzuka which is going to make Leclerc's and possibly Hamilton because he's going to need a new ERS as well here hell so we might actually just write this one off take our penalties here uh, kind of because we have to and then try from Qatar and onwards to try and make something happen but we'll jump into Japan here see what we can do so, as I mentioned earlier, we have a bit of a problem here for Hamilton. His ERS is also failing. But we are basically at quality right now. And if we look at the car, we still suck at high-speed cornering. But uh, we're well, at least getting up there with the rest of the grid. I think we do need to take... I think we do need to take the penalty here. Um, just because we can always hope for the rain not to be too bad. I think we'll take the ERS penalty here and the engine penalty we might take in Mexico or a different place where it's somewhat easy to overtake. But Leclerc here, we have taken a full set of penalties. We just had to. He has, well, an engine that is usable for a couple of races. He has no ERS. He has one gearbox for the last, as I said, seven races and, uh, and uh, three sprint races. And let's face it, the practice gearbox is here. They don't have enough durability. They're going to run out of durability before this one reaches 40. So he's going to need a new gearbox. It's just that simple. But yeah, we're going to jump into qualifying. We'll see if we can get ourselves at least a good starting point before we get bumped down. 
But as mentioned, I think this is unfortunately just how things had to be. And hopefully we can still have a little bit of a uh, good race here and uh, minimize the damage. It's basically going to be the mindset. It's basically the mindset of this entire episode, unfortunately. But it's also a fun and different way to play than uh, how things usually go. So I've been enjoying it. A not so great qualifying here in Japan with us ending, as you can see, 20th and 13th after penalties. It's not amazing. Uh, it is what it is, however. And we'll just have to deal with that. For Leclerc, we have taken a new full set, as I mentioned. And for Hamilton, we have taken just TRS. Now, if we take a look here at the rain, we can expect it to arrive around lap 25. So we're going to have to try and figure out a strategy to make that work. We could start on the hard tire. It seems to do pretty well there, getting us to the rainy period. But do we have better options is going to be the, the key here. And I think the medium is going to be a better option. We're just about going to get there. And the only other thing we could do is just run full attack, pit, then run another full attack, say soft or medium. That would basically be the two-stop strategy from the back, which actually does line up pretty well. The question is, is that going to work? That's the thing. Degradation is fairly high around Suzuka to begin with, so probably not. But I think it's going to gonna be the best that we can maybe do here. And we'll just mirror it with Leclerc, and if we see the rain arrive later, we'll just have to tune it down towards the end. Because the rain actually arrives here. Not here. It arrives here, according to the track graph. So this should be viable. We'll just have to make sure that we absolutely use everything that we have from the tires. And the reason why we're doing it like this is very simple. We are starting further back. The question here is going to be, would it be better to take the penalty for the engine for Hamilton here rather than, say, Mexico? And honestly, it might be. Um, there's two reasons for this. For starters, we can get the side pods upgraded by the time we get to Mexico. So taking the penalty here could be less punishing. And if we play the rain correctly, we could jump some cars in the pits. The two stop here could also work for, you know, getting a little bit further up the grid order. But honestly, we might also, we might also go ahead and do another thing here to just test it. So lap 25, like so. What will be quicker? This or running the medium standard up until that point. Which one of those is quicker? They're about equal in terms of lap time. Okay, we're starting towards the back anyways. We're going to gamble on a, t on a double. I think that is more, more likely to give us results. And I think that we are going to kind of just ride off this race a little bit. Um, for two reasons. The Aston said it looked good. So we'll take the engine penalty here. And unfortunately, we can't take the gearbox penalty because I haven't actually broken the seal on that one. Should have gotten that done in quality. That's my bad. The ERS is fresh. Uh, honestly, I'm going to switch that before we go into the race. I'm going to... No, we can't. That would have that would have to be... Nope, we can't. I'm, I'm uh, confusing the ERS for the gearbox because I believe Leclerc has a uh, gearbox that we could have switched on to. It's actually Hamilton that has the 60% gearbox. Yep. Okay. I'm done being confused. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Sorry about that. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go for this. It is a little bit more risky, but we are starting towards the back of the grid. I do think that we can doing things like that probably get something done, because otherwise we're just gonna get stuck most likely in the DRS train. We're gonna have to have better tires than the cars in front. In order to get overtakes done, it's going to help us build confidence, hopefully, before the rain arrives. And hopefully we can get both cars up into the point somewhat. But we're going to be very reliant here. If we go back and have a look at the uh, uh, the qualifying results here. Qualified second and seven, so not too shabby. But what I actually want to have a look at is the qualifying results. So Alonso is actually on pole, uh, Stroll's eighth. So the ass is looking good, but they're taking penalties as well. And if it wasn't for that, we might have been able to cause some problems for the Red Bull. But on a positive note, the fact that the Astons now are somewhat competitive could help us a lot in the sense that they could take points of Red Bull. They could also take points of us, but I have my hopes. A lot of soft tires there, so 
We'll have to see if we pick the correct strategy or if we just end up getting uh, stuck immediately. We are starting back of the grid. Last to first challenge for today. Not the best of starts, but we might be able to get the Alfa Romeo. So at least a little bit uh, going for us there. Really wish Hamilton was uh, able to just follow. But yeah, this is basically going to be it. We're going to be stuck in a bit of a train with a lot of other cars. And that is going to make moving forwards a bit of a challenge. But uh, we'll try the best here to make it happen. Leclerc has already made two overtakes. I think he's uh, going to go for a third. Sorry, second overtake there. Go for a third on Sergeant. So Leclerc has come out fighting. We'll just need to see if we can get the same for Hamilton here. He's falling a little bit behind. But yeah. We're going to go aggressive, try and make our way through the pack. Looks like it's already peak. And then we will hopefully get back in there with the French mediums. Get a few more overtakes done. And uh, jump some cars when the rain arrives. That's going to be a plan. Let's see if we can execute it. So the strategy here is not going to work as rain is now arriving earlier than anticipated. We also had Hamilton have a bit of a lockup, which forced me to try and take care of his tires. The rain is now scheduled to arrive in three minutes or two laps time. Which means that it did not arrive around lap 25 as anticipated. It's actually been moved up to lap 19. So yeah, that uh, that backfired quite harshly here, unfortunately. Uh, hopefully Leclerc can make a couple more positions. But this might be a bit of a throwaway race. The only benefit here is that Verstappen isn't doing too great either. But Paris is currently fighting Ocon and Sainz. So... We're going to have to pray for uh, for them doing well, and I think we might actually try and jump in here immediately, maybe. Some of the other cars are trying that. It is going up quick. Might we be able to benefit here by jumping on the Inters early? Just maybe we can make that work. Honestly, at this point, it's the only real, you know, gamble that we have left, unfortunately. Because, yeah, I did not anticipate the the weather to arrive that much earlier. And by the time it got updated, we really didn't have any choice in the matter. Three second stop time for Hamilton. I see what we end up here with Leclerc. He was a little bit, uh, a little bit too far down the road by the time I got the, the message through. So that's a bit of a problem. But as you can see, he's still running last. And... I sincerely doubt that he's going to be able to jump anyone here with the De Vries and show kind of blocking the road. The question now is, can Leclerc come out behind before anyone? And with a pit stop arrow, the only one he's beating out is Hamilton, unfortunately. So this race is going to be very, very difficult from here on out. But I'll be working on getting the cars forwards. We just have to see uh, to what degree we can get that done. There is now a virtual safety car as Paris has had a bit of an incident and crashed out, so maybe it's still salvageable, we'll have to see. Shame about the camera angle. Not happy, Paris. But yeah, um, I don't know if this, this virtual safety car might actually hurt us because we need to try and make our way through at least Piastri. Bot outs would be amazing if we could get through there before we pit for wets. But yeah, we're gonna have a bit of a bit of a challenging time going forwards here, as we still have a few lives to work with, four, five, basically, before we go for wets. But even then, we as I mentioned, we need to make it past at least Piastri, hopefully bot ass, and that's gonna be difficult. We're getting to a shift now to the full wets. As you can see, the uh, water's going up fairly rapidly. And I think it's going up rapidly enough here that we should jump into the pits uh, at the end of this lap, potentially. We're just up to 14th. But with a bit of luck here, we should be able to do a bit of jumping. But at the same time, 231. It's close, but it's not quite there yet. Pit lane here isn't too, uh, too long either with the 23 seconds. Um, so I don't think it's going to be worth it for us to jump in immediately. I, I think we might need to just wait here. It's not going up quick enough at the moment. So we'll do it at the end of this next lap. Unfortunately, everyone else is going to do it too then. 
But we don't really have a choice in the matter, is the unfortunate truth, because jumping in that early, we'd be just shredding our wets. And as you can see here, we've done what basically amounts to another lap, with the Verstappen running wide, getting a little bit punished. And even then, it's just up to 3, three 10 millimeters. It's just one minute now, though, until it's going to start pouring down again, which should drastically bring the rain levels up. So, or water levels, rather. So we're going to jump in now, as Hulkenberg, Gasly does the same. Uh, but as Magnus and Stroll, neither of them do it. But of course, we have somewhat slow stop there with the double stack. Sergeant with a bit of a spin. Uh, but yeah, we're now going to have to try and take care of these tires a little bit as well. Not completely burn them immediately, which is kind of what we're doing at the moment. But yeah, we're getting to the full wets. We can go attack here, try and make some overtakes. It's going to be difficult though. We were 14 before this. Let's see what we get here. Now that Stroll is pitting. He was ahead of us before the pit stops. Leclerc comes out ahead of him. Um, that's basically it. Magnuson, Piastri. We, we're going to need to jump those if we want to get anything out of this. So let's see if we can get past Bottas immediately here. Stroll has been a bit of a blocker, which is unfortunate because the Aston is upgraded. So it's kind of hard to overtake that car. <laughs> Piastri does another lap while Magnussen does pit. We should be able to jump him, I think, with both cars here. We are overheating the tires at the moment, but that's not really a big deal. The, the wet tire is not going to last for, well, it might last until the end of the race. But the wet tire is very durable, so we might need to slow down if we can't get the overtake done. But as long as we are attacking, I'm going to allow it to, uh, I'm going to allow, allow it to overheat a little bit. Let's put it like that. Unfortunately, Magnus and Air actually snuck out just ahead of Hamilton. So, yeah, we, we might have a little bit of a problem here on our hands. If Leclerc can't get the move done, he can turn it down to standard. He might get re-overtaken here because of the fact that we're turning it down, though. That's the problem. Piastri finally gets into the pits. But yeah. Hamilton gets his overtake done. We can turn him down to stand a little bit to cool down the tires. Have them both recharge. And this is basically how I do it under wet. Turn down the tires to cool them. Recharge the energy. Then get ready for the next attack. The question here just that's going to remain is just very simply, is there going to be another change in the weather? Or are we just going to be fighting Albon for that point? Can we get Sonoda to maybe minimize damage a little bit here? But yeah, looks like it might be intercept at the end. And if we can at least get to the back of, say, Alonso before that, that would be amazing. But that is 22 seconds that we're going to have to gain. That's going to be, uh, that's going to be a rough one. So the track condition just changed to damp, which means that we could potentially have four laps or three laps rather with Inters going for us here. Now, is it going to be quick enough? I don't really know. But the fact, fact of the matter is we're gambling with just a single point here. No matter what choice we make, at worst we lose a single point, we might gain some with Sonoda here. Um, question is, is it going to be worth it? Probably not. This gamble, but at the same time, we've used a lot of tire. Fresh inters are going to be a lot quicker. And as the water decreases, it should just be quicker and quicker. So I'm going to go ahead here. We're going to get both cars in. We're going to go on inters for the last couple of laps here. And if we're lucky, it might pay off. Let's say if we get a safety car, it's going to pay off massively. But for the third race in a row here, we have a pit stop error. So yeah. This game is not, uh, I, I swear, every time a Red Bull crashes, we have to get a pit, uh, I was about to say a pit bull, a pit stop error to balance the scales. That's kind of how it feels like. Yeah, it looks like uh, the water didn't decrease quick enough for our gamble here to pay off. Um, it's a one point gamble though. It's not a big deal. And Hamilton's been in a bit of an incident. Oh, we've had a crash. That looks at things. Take a closer look. And they're bound to be struggling with the wet track. And not just one car. I'd say that is the Alfa Romeo turning in slightly too early. Luckily, we didn't get any damage to components. That's the only thing I can say. That is really the only positive from all of this. But yeah, Leclerc is flying. Had three more laps, we maybe would have been able to make something happen. But uh, unfortunately, we do not have that. So it was a gamble. Didn't pay off. 
I had a hope that the, the water would decrease a little bit quicker. Unfortunately, it did not. But even then, we almost caught up back up to that 10 place. Or will we, actually? Let's see here. Will we get him on the line? Science, the line first, Science actually won. We almost got him on the line. Disabled. Yeah, Science, uh, Science did get a win here in the Mercedes. So he can be happy with that, at least. But yeah, pretty bad, uh, pretty bad race from from us all things considered. Ocon snatched his fastest lap. Verstappen gets 15 points. So, considering that we ate all all our penalties here, hopefully that we're gonna have to take for the rest of the season. I say we, I'm I'm kind of coping. I'll be honest, but I say we have a it's a good trade. Unfortunately, Alonso didn't have a good race. Neither did uh, Stroll, even though they qualified nicely. Norris had a massive one. So yeah, looks like we could have a few more kind of drivers challenging for points. That's going to make it a little bit easy for Hamilton to keep on to his lead going into the last, uh, probably last couple of episodes of the season. We still have a five point lead on Red Bull. So we're still leading. We have gone through the hardest part here. We have pit stop errors that we need to fix. And uh, yeah. It's not looking great from that perspective. We paid 16 million of our cost caps. So again, development wise, we're kind of stopping because we don't really have any other choice at this point. Uh, this front wing is basically a part of a development front wing, I think. But even then, it's basically wasted at this point because I don't think we have the money to make another one. Manufacturing of some parts is done. That is good. Uh, we have an underfloor that has failed. We're gonna, well, install the replacement. And with that, we can now start actually manufacturing the new underfloor here. Uh, because as I mentioned, we're not going to be making any new underfloors anyways. And if we take a look at the front wing that we might be able to make, uh, I think we're going to have to sacrifice the cooling of the brakes a little bit. This would be something that could benefit us towards the end here. But even then, it's not going to be a massive gain. Could try and focus it on the low speed cornering ability. That could maybe be a little bit helpful, get a little bit more of that. Uh, but even then, I don't know if it's worth it from a monetary perspective to use 1.6 million of our last 12 million on this one because we still need to make components. Four chassis is 2 million. So, yeah, the game there is too little. We'll have to try and make it, make do with racecraft, basically. Okay, let's check the uh, picker again. My <laughs> yellow note is screaming at me to get it done. So, as you can see, they're still tied, and they're going to be tied into next month, but that's when we can start doing things. So we'll just put in a little bit of a uh, mistake uh, reduction in there. This, they're wary, so even if we don't do any training, they're going to become very, very tired because we do switch out parts for the most part, which is a little bit annoying, but it's just how things are. We've lost our design center improvement, which is fine. We're not going to be able to use it anymore anyways. So that's not really a big deal. What I do want to do, though, is actually go ahead and manufacture a few parts, namely the underfloor at the very least. We're going to make two of these to get started. I'm not going to bother rushing them. This is kind of also what I'm talking about. We need to supplement the parts that we are lacking. I did actually forget to put this part on for Suzuka because I'm an absolute genius that's sad that is very sad that i forgot to put on that, that i rushed the side pod and then forgot to put it on before suzuka that is uh that's embarrassing that's the best way i can describe it but red bull has caught up five points separates us we have one more upgrade this year red bull is looking stronger than we are so it's going to be a close fight to the finish. They might take constructors. I think Hamilton's going to take the championship altogether. So yeah, let me know what you think. Wish us luck. And again, I do feel like a game like this where the other teams actually have a stronger card than us. It's a lot more fun than games where we have a stronger car, but way worse drivers, honestly. Interestingly enough, you might say. But yeah, that is the current uh, situation with the Ferrari save. For Hamilton. 
we're probably gonna have two more episodes of this because as i said it is kind of fun and interesting to me at least to uh, have close fights with rivals to see that if we start at the back we kind of struggle to get in the points to be fair though mainly due to uh to due to the rain but uh yeah again let me know what you think thank you for watching hope to see you next time and uh hope you have a good day evening morning and i'll see you next time bye bye